It is another moment that the Lord has given us that we may hear his word. Here is your pastor, Eve Kiara, ready to share with you the word of God. Today, God is teaching us something which is very important to God, to ourselves, and to other people. And I am here uh, this day to share with you the word of God. Uh, last time we talked about integrity in communication. And we said that integrity uh, is a character quality. It's a, a quality that defines who a person is, what they are inside, what they are outside. So what you say is what you mean in your heart. And we talked about communication, uh, and we said communication is sharing meaning, sharing understanding. What is in your heart is what you communicate or share with the person you want to understand. And we said in communication there, we can use our tongue to communicate. And we said there are very many challenges of the tongue. And we can commit many sins using the tongue. And we said one of the things that the tongue can cause is that you can speak falsehood, you can slander people, you can accuse them uh, uh, incorrectly, uh, you can slander people, you can talk too much, you can sin with your tongue. Today I want us to look at one of the sins of the tongue, and that is called lying. A lying tongue, the Bible says, God hates. Why is this subject of communication and the true communication, factual communication, correct communication important? It is because when we communicate one another, God is a witness in our communication. And also, when we are communicating what we don't mean in our hearts, when we are deceiving, when we are lying to other people, we are violating them, we are violating ourselves, and we are even violating the commandment of God. So today we take a few moments and think about lying, kusema uongo. Uh, praise the Lord. It is very important, my viewers, tuangalie hii kitu ya kusema uongo, kwa sababu imekuwa ni kitu, imekuwa very rampant in our society and it is destroying us. So what does it mean to lie? The biblical definition of lying is to practice deception, falsehood, either by word or by action. That's what we mean by lying. It is the very opposite of truth. We have truth in our hearts when we speak something other than the truth, which is in our hearts, which we shouldn't be communicating, then we are lying to people. Uh, I want to pause here and ask my viewers a question. Have you ever lied? Have you ever lied? Think about your life. I think many people over time in their lives have told a lie. And the reason uh, why people tell lies, there are various reasons. Maybe as you listen to me, you can recall probably a time when you lie that what the consequences were. People lie for many reasons. Uh, another time in church, I was asking people, have you ever lied? And some said, yes, we have lied. And why did you lie? One said, to escape punishment. Another one said, not to hurt my parents. Another one said, uh, so that I can benefit. So people lie because of personal gain. People lie because I want to evade punishment. People lie because they want to appear good and they are not good. But what does the Bible say concerning lying? Did you know that when we talk about falsehood, we are talking about lying. And in Exodus chapter number 20, 
verse 19, uh, sorry, 16, the word of God tells us this. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Yes, bearing false witness is saying lies against your neighbor or, or saying things that actually did not happen, but maybe you want to cover up something. So God teaches us not to lie, not to speak falsehood. Why so? Why is it so important that one of the Ten Commandments is that we should not lie, we should not um, force, uh, uh, accuse others falsely? Why? Number one, when we lie, we also lie to ourselves and we violate our hearts. We are saying what we know, it is not true in our hearts, and therefore, unguilt consciousness begins to form in our hearts. And when a guilt consciousness forms in our hearts, it's because we have violated the word of God. So we stand guilty before God, and we can stand guilty before people. People may not know we have lied, uh, but maybe by, um, by the power of God, it can be revealed that we lied and the consequences can be very tough. We can learn more of the consequences of lying uh, from the word of God. I want to share with us uh, the text for today, Acts chapter four, from verse number 36 to chapter five. And the verse number one is a very familiar story. Maybe you already know what I am going to say. It was when the church was uh, uh, in its formation, in the early church, and the people were, were really loving each other. People were sharing things in common. And this is what happened. And Acts chapter four, verse number 36. So there is this man called Joseph, who was also called by the apostles Barnabas, which means a son of encouragement, a Levite, a native of Cyprus sold a field that belonged to him and he brought the money and he laid it at the apostles' feet. Chapter 5, verse 1. But, an, but a man named Ananias with his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property and with his wife's knowledge he kept him back for himself some of the proceeds and brought only a part of it, and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back for yourself part of the proceeds of the land? While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not at your disposal? Why is it that you have con contrived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. When Ananias heard these words, he fell down and breathed his last. Oh my! And in great fear came upon all who heard of it. The young men rose and wrapped him up, and he carried him out and buried him. Verse 7, after an interval of about three hours, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter said to her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yes, for so much. But Peter said to her, how is it? that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord beyond the feet of those who buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out. Immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. When the young men came in, they found her dead and they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. And a great fear came upon the whole church 
and upon her who heard of these things. Let's pray. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. Your word has power to deliver us. Your word has power, has power to change us. Your word has power to transform our thinking. Lord, as we think about this word that is written for our good, I pray that everybody watching us, O oh God, my God and my Father, will think about this word and even change it from being a liar to being a honest person in all, our, in all their dealings in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, teach us today how to speak correctly, how to speak the truth that your name will be glorified in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and we give thanks. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. An interesting story uh, of a couple. One Sunday morning, while they were discussing about how they were going to lie, God was there hearing what they were saying, seeing what they were planning. They even decided how they were going to execute the lie. I said that the lying is practice of deception, practice of falsehood. And so here they are, they go to church, dressed very well, probably the husband joined maybe the Bible study, maybe prayers and worship. And then it came time for giving. And here he is, bringing the proceeds that he had sold from his land, which he had promised Pastor Peter in his new church. And you see, when he brought the proceeds, the Holy Spirit quickly informed Peter that this man is lying. And he speaks to Ananias, and Ananias, I'm sure, was worried. How did Peter get to know this? Verse 3 says, Peter asked him, Ananias, is this all what you sold? Yes. Say, how is it that you have decided to lie to the Holy Spirit? It is not to man that you are lying. My viewers, it is very important to know that all the people in this world belong to God. The church belongs to God. The members of your family belong to God. When you lie to them, always know first you are lying to God and is a witness. Why? God is omnipresent. He is present everywhere. He is omniscient. He knows all things. God is omnipotent. He is all-powerful God. So when we speak falsehood, when we lie to others, the first witness is God. First, when we are cooking the lie in the heart, God is seeing. When the mouth is executing the lie, God is hearing. So for us to lie, it takes effort. It takes a lot of human effort and a lot of defiant of the word of God to lie. Oh my God. That is why even when we are in courts of law, or even when you are in a classroom, or even when you are in a family setting, people who lie are already feeling that they are not doing the right thing. It's very difficult for them to look you in the eye and say the lie. However, those who are per have perfected it can do exactly that. But the Bible is telling us not to lie. So when we lie, what happens? Number one, we contravene the commandment of God. We break the commandment of God. Exodus chapter 20, verse number 16. Do not lie to one another. Number two, when we lie, we violate our own integrity. In our hearts, we violate our own selves. We sin against ourselves because we carry around a guilty consciousness in our, in our hearts. When we lie, we violate other people. We deceive them. Why? Because maybe we want to gain something. Why? Maybe we want to deceive them concerning our character. So Ananias wanted to look a good man of God who is con uh, contributing 
to the church projects who loves the people of God and he says he has only the Lord and that is what in God but in his heart he was not all that loving why because he kept a part of the proceeds to himself actually Ananias didn't need to lie to anybody after all it was his land he could say I will bring 50 percent or 20 percent or 10 percent but why did Ananias lie oh my god why did Ananias tell his wife also to lie and she agreed it is because when we are lying we have another witness and who is the other witness when we are lying he is called the devil he is called the deceiver he is called satan he is called the violator of everything good and so ananias and his wife listened to the devil and they agreed to the deception of the devil you see on one hand there is a commandment of god don't lie on the other hand the devil is coming to show us or to show them why it is so important that they can lie that they can benefit to keep the money and they can also look like very good contributors to the eyes of the pastor and the members of the church may god deliver our congregations from such deception may god deliver our country from such deception why would the people lie about the projects Ate, you have come to a school you have come to contribute you are the guest of honor to, to build a classroom you come with a check maybe of two hundred thousand but later on that check stands out actually to be a hundred thousand because you want a part of it to be taken back you want the people who vote for you to look like they are actually you are actually very good and you are for the people but in your heart you know you are a deceiver before god and the devil you know you are a deceiver let us desist from such things why should we play such tricks with one another so another thing other than violating yourself the other thing that happens when we lie we cause mistrust with other people we affect our relationships we destroy our relationships what happened to the relationship between apostle peter ananias and his wife it was destroyed because the holy spirit told peter ananias is, is lying oh my god may god help us to walk in the spirit of god so that we can uh, lead the church of god without a lot of troubles and without you know a lot of talking may the lord god come through for us as pastors in the mighty name of jesus what else happened the relationship between ananias and the members of the church they could not trust him anymore what else happened ananias died so the ultimate consequence of lying is it is death the bible says in revelation chapter 21 and the verse number eight the final the final if you don't repent and you continue to lie this is what the bible says will happen to all liars and the lying is taught a lot in the word of god but revelations 21 and the verse number eight says huh but as for the cowardly the faithless the detestable for murderers the sexually immoral sorcerers idolaters and all liars their proportion will be their portion will be in the lake that burns with the fire and the sulfur which is the second day oh my god while we are living let us know that liars will not enter heaven liars will not see the kingdom of god so by the grace of god and by the power of god let us stop lying to one another and our god will help us praise the lord amen the other thing concerning lies lies make you not to be trusted you cannot be trusted uh, i know you know the consequences of lying 
Maybe you have ever lied, probably gone to jail for lying. Maybe suspended from school for lying. Maybe your marriage is in shambles for lies. Maybe your children hate you for lying. Many, many, many consequences. We want to ask ourselves, why? Where do lies come from? What is the origin of lies? Praise the Lord. Wow. Ha. Huh. Let's read John chapter 8 and the verse number 44. Where did the lies come from? We know in Genesis chapter 3, verse number 1 to 5, we know the deceiver is called the devil, is the one who deceived. And then deceived Adam and Eve. And then from there we are all born after Adam and Eve. And we carry their Adamic nature. One time when Jesus was teaching, this is what he said, John chapter 8, verse number 44. He says, huh. let's read from verse 43. He says, why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. Many times people uh, are not bearing to hear the word of God and the commandment of God. So it has been there for a long time. Maybe you have, I, I hope nobody is bored with my message because probably I am touching your heart and you don't want it. So Jesus says, why people are not hearing him and they cannot bear his word is verse 44. You are, you are, you are of your father the devil. You are, you, and your will is to do your father's desires. He is a murderer from the beginning and has nothing to do with the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out his own character for he is a liar and the father of all lies. But because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. I hope you are believing me today and you can desist from lying. Jesus talked about it, I am talking about it. Let us not be like our father, the devil. Those who make a practice of, of, of lying and they do their businesses by deception. They run their offices by deception. They deceive even members of their own congregation. The Bible is saying if we keep on lying, then we are having the character of the devil and we, do, we, we wouldn't like to be called the devil's children. However, if we want to be called God's children, then we must bear the image of our God. What does the Bible say about God? Numbers 23 and the verse number 19. Numbers 23 and the verse number 19, it is very important we read the word of God. Numbers 23, verse number 19. What does the Bible teach us concerning the character of our God? Numbers 23, verse 19 says, 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie, or a son of man that he should change his mind. Has he not said, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken, and will he not fulfill it? So, God cannot lie. He has no capacity to lie. It is my prayer that my viewers will want to be like in God and not the devil. Let us develop a character of honesty like our God. Because honesty has its uh, benefits in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So what else do we learn about God? We want to learn about God in Hebrews, and God will bless us. Hebrews chapter number 6 and the verse number 18. We are about there. Hebrews, I am hoping I am convincing somebody to adopt the character of God and to run after the character of God and not the character of the devil. Hebrews chapter 6 and the verse number 18 says, it says this from 17. So when God desired to show more convinc convincingly, uh -huh, 
So when God desired to show more convincingly to the heirs of the promise the unchangeable character of his purpose, he guaranteed it with an oath, so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled for the refuge might have strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope that is set before us. We have this as a sure and a steadfast anchor for the soul, a hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain where Jesus has gone as a forerunner on our behalf. Having become a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, what am I saying, brethren, that God is not a liar and he cannot lie? And we pray by the grace of God that we can have the character of God. People who do not lie are peaceful, trustworthy, men of integrity, men that can be relied on. God does not change, so we can rely on his promises. May God help us to practice this morality, the image of our God. You are there and you are saying, Pastor, pray with me. I want to stop lying. Pray with me. I, I want to be delivered from the power of lying. Pray with me. I want to live an honest life. Let me pray for you and the Lord will bless you. Let's pray. Precious Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for my viewers today. The message is so simple. Everyone I believe has understood that's against your will to lie. Lord, there are people who struggle with the lies because the endeavor has enticed them for a long time and they have made lying their, their lifestyle and it has become a stronghold in their minds, in their brains. I pray in the name of Jesus, breaking every power of lying upon every person who wants to be delivered from the power of lying. By the blood of Jesus, we have read, O oh God, that you entered before our God to offer a sacrifice that we can be delivered from the powers of the devil. Oh my God, I pray by that in blood, by that in blood, oh my God, that your people can be delivered from the power of prayer, from the power of lying, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, as many as are coming to you today, may you hear their prayer and may you deliver them and let them be like you, Christ, speaking that which is right in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I thank God for you, my viewers, uh, that uh, you have uh, uh, prayed to stop lying. Now, the next thing is that I would want you to live with Jesus all the days of your life. And this is by welcoming him in your heart so that he can fill you with his spirit and he can teach you as his lifestyle, a life of honesty. If you want to receive Jesus, pray this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I know I am a sinner. Forgive my sins. Cleanse me with the blood that flowed at Calvary and deliver me from today and save me. Enter my life. I want to live with you all the days of my life. Fill me with your spirit. Amen. If you are praying that prayer, you can call the number of, on your screen for encouragement and support in your Christian growth. Thank you so much for listening to us. If you are in name, join us at in Deliverance Church Majimbo, where our services begin from 8.30 uh, to 11, uh, first service, then second service from 11 to 1 p.m. Welcome and in God bless you. Thank you for listening to me. We would appreciate your feedback so that we can continue to encourage one another. Amen and amen.